Business Brain, the Entrepreneur's Podcast, episode 412 for Wednesday, December 28th, 2022. Folks and welcome to Business Brain. Welcome back to Business Brain. If you're, if this is not your first episode, but if you are, it's fine. We're a welcoming family here, except that we lied to you because we said that last week's episode was the final episode of the year, and we would be back next week with our first episode of 2023. That has changed, obviously, because you're hearing this while we're still in 2022. We have some things that we wanted to talk about that are part of 2022, uh, so we're going to do that. And then our first episode will be uh, of 2023 will be the week of the ninth. So you, you get one episode for these two weeks. We just pulled it ahead a little bit. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Glad to uh, release this one today. As we Like you and I started talking about a couple of items and decided that, yeah, it's worth, uh, worth releasing early, if you will, so that people could uh, take advantage of what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Well, if let's let's get so let's get right into that because it's the it was our pre-show agenda organizing discussions of what's called the solo 401k or the individual 401k some people call it a uni k uh, which is a retirement account built very specifically for small business owners solo business owners but there are some yes. asterisks that let you include your spouse uh and and then the the other big thing is you can't have one of these plans if your business has employees, or Unlo- you own part of another business with employees. There's some you, you know you need to talk. You got to talk with, with your accountant uh, about that. Yeah, yeah the closely yeah. held companies and and all of that. That's but right. it's That's it's not as clear. It's not it's not definitive one way or the other. You have to look at how those businesses are organized and and that sort of thing because yes. you can have a there is a world where you can have a business that has its own 401k and then you have a second business that has the solo K or the solo, whatever we're calling it, the solo 401k. Yeah. And you as the business owner, I had, cause I had both accountants on the phone last week about this. This was a meeting of the minds. It was, it was a crazy little call, but they started talking and they were like, yeah, actually you can have it where you increase your contribution limits by contributing the maximum to your solo 401k in one business and then you're an employee of this other business, so you get to contribute there too, just like your other employees do. And then everything is like arm's length and and copacetic because you're covering all your employees with with one and yada yada. They just want to make sure you're not yeah. screwing your employees. But, yeah, that's right. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. it's great. Yeah. And so I I was mentioning to Dave that oh I just funded uh you know in, in my case since it's and. and Dave just enlightened me about uh, the rule. There's certain rules where if your spouse is involved, typically you're funding that uh, before the end of the year, unless she's a member of an LLC that is your uh, solo 401k business. And uh, correct. Yeah. If your spouse, when you pay your taxes, if your spouse is your employee, employee contributions have to be done in the calendar year. Um, but partner or em- or employer contributions can happen up until your tax filing deadline. Um, right. It, and so if you're, and, and again, your spouse is the only employee that you can have and still file a solo 401k. The, uh, cause I just went through all this like hours ago. I didn't realize we were talking about it on the show, but I'm glad here we yeah, are. Um, the, th- there are, a, so that's one asterisk. The other asterisk, one other asterisk is, that the plan in order to have th- there are two there are two limits of contribution that that you can uh work with here one is yourself as an employee which you are and then there is the yourself as the business owner and there there are contributions that can happen on both of those fronts so even though you're not an employee of your business you get to treat yourself that way in this scenario again right. do all of this with your accountant but in order to treat yourself in that scenario you can make those contributions up until your tax filing deadline. But in order to qualify for the employee contributions, the plan needs to be established before the end of the calendar year that that the contributions or the tax year, the contributions count towards. 
This is why we're releasing this episode That's today. Why we're here today. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you've got to have the plan established at the very least to get the, the most out of it uh, before December 31st. But um, then, then it's a, it's, depending on who, the, the relationship between you and your, your spouse in, in terms of the business, hopefully the relationship yes. between you and your spouse is good otherwise. But <laughs> if they're just yes. your employee, then they have to contribute before the end of the year. If they are a partner in an LLC and the only partner of yours in the LLC, then you can do that up until the tax filing deadline. And again, check with your accountant because I, I, yeah. I believe I am 100% correct on all of this, but. I'm good. I'm only correct yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. don't take accounting advice from us other no. than talk to your accountant. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, and it's it's just a great plan. It's you can, you know, if you're an employee, you can uh contribute up to $27,000 and for yourself that 27 plus uh depending upon the revenue that you report from your business. Uh, and so you can really sock away a, a good chunk of cash each year. I think you can do more than 27,000. I think for, for 2022, uh, if yay. you're, if, if you're over, I think the limits in the 50. Yeah. Right here. No, it, that's for you as a, well, the, at the max employee, I just got this email. The max employee deferral has increased to 27,000 for 2022. It's 20,500 plus 6,500 for catch up. If you're over, 50, I think is what it is. Correct. Um, yeah. So, but, oh, and then you've got uh, the employer contribution that you correct. can, can you do and get you up to that 61,000 or whatever it is. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's great. So, you know, pay to yourself or pay to the IRS. You make the call. Um, of course you'd still have to come up with the cash, but yes. one way or another, you're going to have to come up with it either, you know, putting it in your own retirement, uh, or, writing a check to uncle sam right to uncle sam that's right yeah yeah, yeah it's that's it's good. um and i i found out today and i'm not doing this but uh, only because it just hadn't ever come up before but there is a roth 401k which is oh, an yes there is <laughs> an interesting little thing i didn't re a roth solo 401k like i didn't i i yeah. thought it was i thought 401ks were all like tax deferred as opposed to the Roth treatment, which gives you the, um, you you pay, you, you pay tax on, on the contributions, but you, your earnings are, your, the growth of the plan is tax free. So. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. The yeah. Roth is definitely part of, should be part of your, uh, your, uh, uh wealth planning to live your charmed life. So yeah. It's, it's uh, it's really powerful. Yeah. Whether you do the four hundred one k or do some kind of IRA with your you know with your business. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, there's a famous story about Peter Thiel how he turned his Roth from you know it was only worth a couple thousand dollars a few decades ago and now it's worth five billion. If you look that up, you can uh, read that story. Wow. It's pretty interesting. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the founders of, of PayPal. So it's, That's right. It's among among many other things. Yeah. 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 PayPal mafia. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, and even though I said last week we weren't doing an end of year show, I think it's worthwhile. A couple of things that have come up for me, uh, over the last few weeks. One is opportunities. I love this time of year because if you're, if you're in the inventory, if, if you stock products and if, especially if you're a opportunistic buyer like me, if you're a reseller. Uh, if your um, end of year for your business is not 1231, there's just tons of buying opportunities that come along in December from companies that want to dump inventory and get it off their books. Do you have uh, your the, your inventory related business en ending its year like, you know, April 1st or something or March 31st? Yeah, it's March. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Smart. It, and it, it's, I mean, I, I just, I learned that trick years ago. Yeah. Because I made a big mistake one time was, oh, look at all these deals I'm going to buy in December, you know, and then having to manage the uh, the taxes on it uh, at the end of the month, which was which was rough. But shifting and moving it down, it just gives you uh, lots of opportunity to take uh, care of deals. It, it's kind of like the end of the month sale if you're going to or end of the quarter if you're buying a car and somebody's trying to meet quota. There's all kinds of companies out there that want to sell products to hit their numbers before the end of the year. And you can take advantage of those. Yep. Um, it's great. It's smart. Um, there's other ways to do it too. You can have them book the sale to you and you not pay for it until after, I think the end of the year, I think there's some ways, again, you got to talk to your, you gotta, yeah, you got to make sure 
you're on cash versus yeah. accruals basis on your yeah. accounting and and yeah. and manage that properly. But yeah, we yeah. were able to do some of that with the the sale of of um, the Mac Observer that asset last year, Perfect. or this year technically. So yeah, yep. yeah, that's great. And then lastly, uh, you know, I now we're after Christmas and coming up on the new year, and you hear people talking about resolutions, goals for. 2023 and everything. And I just a reminder that, you know, on this show, uh, we subscribe to the concept of systems over goals because it's far more powerful, it's more adaptable, and you can achieve things along the way instead of holding this big goal out to the end that that is much uh, perhaps easier to fail at. Well, so and thinking and the, of- the reason I like systems better than goals is from the, the standpoint of momentum. Even if it's just emotional momentum, if I have a goal set and I hit that goal, I, you know, I'm, I'm a human being and, and most of us will be like, great, I made it. Okay, cool. And then, and then stop, you yeah. stop or you slow down or something changes when you hit a goal. It's it because it's this, you, you know, thing that you've set. It's something you focused on. Now it's gone, right? It's, That's it's right. no longer there. And so it's easy to just back off and be like, okay. And I've, I've caught myself doing it. I mean, it usually takes years for me to realize, oh, wow, I used to be more productive. Why am I not? And that's what really attracts me to the idea of systems. Because once you get a system in place, if the system's working, it's just working. And so make yep. your goal to create a system or something. I don't know. You had a good thing. But, so Yeah, yeah it, 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 it's a, I love how it's adaptable. And it also... Yeah. It's stackable. And what I mean by that is, you okay, for 2023, like, I want to create a system. I, I want to learn about teaching courses. I want to teach an online course. That's my thing. Okay, I've, I've been working on a new book, but I've started to think, you know, I think this would be better as a course than a book. So, but instead of setting this goal that I'm going to create a course in the first quarter of 2023 or whatever it is, I'm going to create a system so to learn how to develop courses. And it's it's adaptable. And as I learn a little bit, I'm going to tell myself in my head, because I'm a huge story guy, oh, look, I already had success because I I found the, the best place to teach me or I hired a teacher or a coach. And then I'm going to build on that. It's kind of like the to did list concept where you're looking back and, and looking at how what you got done that day. That, in my case, helps me be more productive the next day. So the systems, adapting it, stacking up the successes you have along the way, fuels that system and allows you to power through a goal and to keep, uh, you know, adjusting as you go along. I, I love the concept. I think it's great. I do too. No, it's I, obviously we've been talking about goals versus systems for years here. I, in fact, I gave a short three minute talk at, at uh, a Google conference um, called Goals Are for Losers. And people yeah, loved exactly it. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's because because like I said, it it disappears when you hit that. And if you've got the system, or if you don't money, hit it, it you going. you yeah. If, or if you don't hit the goal, you often blow you're up down. everything you yeah. yeah, and everything you learned along the way gets overshadowed yeah. by the fact that you didn't hit your goal correctly. But per, but I guarantee you, something else happened along the way. Right, you changed. You learned, you you know, maybe you realize the goal isn't really, you know, either attainable or you don't want to achieve that anymore. So you're redoing. So systems are, you know, terrific. We had, I don't remember the author's name, but we had an author of a book called Systemology. Is that right? Oh, I think that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the show. Well, let me, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll put a, a link in, uh, in the show notes at, um, businessbrain.show for you to go take a yeah, look. Yeah, David Jennings of Systemology. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but, but systems are the way to go, man. It, it's just, if you search for systems uh, up at, at uh, businessbrain.show, you'll find lots of uh, feedback on that because we both, Dave and I, have been successful uh, adapting to that. So It's the key. Yeah. Important. I, yeah, I try to get my, I'm, I'm always like whenever I'm working with my staff and I, I had meetings with a lot of the team this week, cause it's a, it is a good time to start thinking about, all right, what systems do we want to put into place for next year? And, and it really was about, all right, let's just put systems in. It wasn't, let's set goals. The goal is the system. That's it. You know, that's yeah, great. Yeah. So, so that's those things I wanted to talk about, you know, that are, that are end of year related. So I'm glad that we came, uh, 
to you uh, this week and kind of wrap up that stuff. We hope you like these shorter shows. Let us know what you think. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Please reach out. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you. I want to know what systems you're putting into place for 2023. So let us know. Feedback at businessbrain.show. And uh, happy new year, folks. Be safe. Keep living that charmed life. 